Don't forget to check out the website, guys. It's updated weekly with new blog posts. Also over there, you can check out my merch as well, which is now available for sale. And there's also a handy guide if you are new to reselling. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a 10 sales in 10 minutes video. Uh, this is going to be from the about the 22nd of February to the 1st of March. It's the 1st of March today. As always, I'm recording this on a Friday. I do like, um, you know, the week sales kind of thing from Friday to, to the next Friday. I've been doing that for quite a while now actually because I used to... Uh, I used to kind of forget to do sales updates and would be kind of quite sporadic, but I'm trying every Friday um, to do the, the sales updates so you guys kind of can get a more regular picture of what's selling. And then obviously the things that I'm picking up in the whole videos, you might be able to see some of those things selling as well, so it's quite nice. Um, but yeah, first off, we've got this uh, vintage Kaplunk, uh, Kaplunk by Ideal, um, 1967 uh, sort of retro board game here. This is a good one to pick up. I can see it's like this long box version um, and it's got like the little um, oh, what do you call them like the straws in here got the marbles in there got this little unit in here as well the um, plastic unit uh, and then also you've got the little um, base unit there as well so oh and also the instructions are printed on the back of the um, box in this case so there isn't any other like paper instructions that you're meant to get with it um, but yeah so that one went for 19.99 plus my postage so Really happy with that one. Um, I actually got this from the vintage board game job lot that I picked up from the auction. Probably would have cost me about two quid, something in that range. Not not a whole, whole load of money. Um, so yeah, two quid or so into 20 quid plus postage. More than happy with that. Definitely worth picking up if you see it for, as I say, a couple of quid, two or three quid, something like that. Um, and yeah, nice one, that one. The other Kaplunks, I don't know whether they go for as much. I know there is a, another... Uh, vintage one. I don't know what year. I think it's a, an early 90s one or late 80s one. But I think it goes for about 15 quid, but most of them now aren't probably going to be that uh, brilliant. But if you can get the vintage ones, you know, any sort of um, vintage versions of, of popular games like the vintage Downfall and stuff does well. And there's a few others as well, but the more modern ones don't seem to do as well these days. They're, they're much more saturated. But yeah, so that's that one. Next, we've got this little uh, Lucas Batteries collectible booklet. I actually accepted an offer of £10 for this, uh, down from obviously the 13 quid. More than happy with that though, because this just owes me pence in like a your ephemera type job lot. Um, a lot of these job lots where you've just got, you know, at the auction house, you've got a big box and it's just full of old leaflets and booklets and pamphlets and newspapers and stuff they te tend to generally go really really cheap like I'm talking in some auction house it depends on the the minimum bid of the auction house the minimum bid of the auction house that I go to is £10 so it's quite high but you can go to some other auction houses where the minimum bid is like £2 or £5 or even £1 in some circumsta circumstances. So you can sometimes pick these up fairly cheap. Um, a lot of these kind of job lots just go for the maiden bid at my auction house and I'm normally the one who, who picks them off. Um, but yeah, so I, I got 10 quid for this. And these are just great because you can get a huge box full of this sort of stuff. Some of them aren't necessarily worth selling. They're just far too low value for me to be dealing with. Or or if I can do job lots to get them over a tenner, then I'll do it that way and then and then list them as a job lot. Um, but there are quite a few also in there that are over a tenner. So you're paying like a tenner plus commission for all these different booklets and everything. Like I'm talking there might be 50 to 100 booklets in one of these boxes. And you only really need five or ten of them to be in decent profit if uh, you know a ten or a booklet kind of thing and then you can job lot some of the rest as I say or maybe you might have to charity shop some of them if they're really not worth doing um, but you know ten quid for that more than happy with that probably cost me literally pence um, in one of those job lots so yeah pretty happy with that sale and don't overlook these kind of things because there are collectors out there who do look for this stuff and um, obviously it is a little bit more niche so you might be waiting a while however on this one I don't think I was waiting that long I was probably only waiting like two weeks or something not not long at all two or three weeks um, so maybe I could have got a little bit more but maybe it's just a case of that person coming along at the right time and seeing it I'm not sure um, but yeah you know some of these are a little bit 
bit niche, but they're definitely worth selling. Uh, next, we've got this LEGO 501st Battalion Clone Trooper. This is obviously 501st Battalion, which is Wex's, Captain Wex's um, Battalion. Uh, this is uh, this went for 1349 uh, It definitely is worth um, looking into the differences between clone troopers if you're selling LEGO, because obviously some of them are going to be from different battalions, and they're going to be worth more money. Uh, obviously, in this case, this one was worth a little bit more money. For more standard clone troopers, you might only get like anywhere from two to five pounds, something like that. But, but this one was obviously a little bit more of a desirable one, so it went for thirteen forty nine. Now, I did um, it did take a while to sell. I did have a large job lot of these, which I'm now in profit on, and a lot of them sold very very quickly. But for whatever reason, this kind of tended to hang around for quite a few months, actually. I don't know why that was. Um, but yeah, I was more than happy just to let it sit there because it's such a small little item. It's not taking up any room. And uh, obviously, I end up getting a decent price for it in the end. So yeah, pretty happy with that one. But definitely um, look out for these different variants of LEGO figures because um, you might be shooting yourself in the foot um, if you price them uh, for less than, you know, they're actually worth. Some some people, I don't think, maybe uh, realise what they've got and then price them, uh, like, kind of just undersell them a little bit. But, yeah, definitely have a look into those. Next, we've got this, um, the County of Lancaster Steel etched map on wooden frame made in Cornwall. So it's just this uh, really nice etched map. I got three of these from the auction ages ago for £5 plus commission. It was the other auction house, not the one I was just explaining that has the £10 minimum bid. It's a different auction house. Um, but yeah, so I got them for £5 plus commission and um, I got three of them. The other two went for £20 each, so 40 quid in total. And then this one, obviously I've knocked it down after a while and it's gone for £17.81 plus my postage there. Um, so yeah, you know, pretty happy with that one. Um, obviously, that's like all profit after postage and fees, etc. anyway. So it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, these were pretty, pretty nice. I liked these. Um, I did kind of take a bit of a punt on them. I did. I think I researched one or two of them before I bid. Um, but I was taking a bit of a punt because I couldn't really see that much information on completing solds about them. Um, but I thought £20 each, that's a fair price. People are going to pick them off for that. Um, you know, maybe I could have gone on the other two. I don't think they'd necessarily sold really quickly. But maybe I could have put it up to 25 quid, something like that in hindsight. Um, and maybe you still would have sold, but it might have taken a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, still, it was a nice pick up that. I really did enjoy uh, dealing with those. So next we've got this one also like the Lucas Batteries one. I uh, took an offer on. I actually accepted 15 quid on this, so it was a little bit lower. But I think, again, I was kind of shooting on this one at, at 20 quid. That was kind of top end. Um, so I was more than happy just to accept an offer on it and get it gone. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of play wear on the nose there of this figure. This is uh, Amelia Pond, uh, obviously, before she grew up into Amy Pond. So, um, young, you know, as I say here, I've put young Amy Pond. Um, so, yeah, 15 quid for that. More than happy with that one. Just came in one of my uh, Doctor Who job lots as I was getting quite a while ago. I've still got a fair bit of Doctor Who stuff. I know I've been mentioning in videos that I need to stock up. I have got still got a fair bit of it. Now I like having a look through it. Um, I looked through it the other day, but I do still definitely need to, to stock up on it as well because um, it does seem to be selling really, really consistently. Like this week, I've had like three or four Doctor Who sales. Um, so it's just like constantly, you know, just coming through and it's really, really nice. So it's just nice to get those re really steady sales. But yeah, so 15 quid for that one. Pretty happy with that one. Next, Vintage. Now, this was a very, very old listing. Um, so, as you can see down here, I've completely mucked up on the postage. Don't ask me why I did that, but this listing must be two years old or something. So, yeah, I, I must have randomly messed up on the postage because... I wasn't very experienced or something, I don't know, but even saying that, two years ago, I would have already been doing reselling a year, so I can't really even blame it on that, can I? But, yeah, anyway, basically, I just mucked up on the postage on this one. But, Vintage 1960s Singer Sewing Machine Dress Maker Hem Measuring Gruel. Um, I got this from a chart shop, I thought it was very, very interesting, uh, very, very long item here, obviously, like a measuring rule, and... Um, I paid a fiver for it, and I had it up for about 30 quid for ages. Came down, came down, came down, came down over over a period of months and months and months. Because as I say, I've probably had this two years or more. Um, and yeah, I finally got down to 17.99 plus 
postage, which actually it's probably going to cost me um, like four quid or something with Hermes. It won't cost me the three quid. So another quid is to come off the sale price, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, basically um, from five quid into 18 quid, you know, I'm still going to make profit. It's still decent, you know, still okay. But it's just not the profit I look for, really. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, sometimes you have things in your inventory, like we all do, that just sit there and sit there and sit there. You think it was a good buy at the time. It wasn't necessarily a good buy at the time. And you end up coming down, coming down, coming down, and then you just sell it for whatever profit you can get. I mean, there probably still is, like, six or seven quid profit in it, maybe even a bit more than that, actually. But, you know, it's just not terribly brilliant especially that i've had it for like two years as well and i've had that five pound invested in it for two years um you know it's not brilliant there's definitely better better ways to spend your money but yeah so that's that one next actually uh speaking of old items this was another really really old item and this was on my old well i say it's my old background it's the current background i have but it was when my photography area was in a different place in the room um so well, i think it is anyway it looks like it is um for I, I don't know how i can tell i can just i can just tell you know i just know because i remember like doing this photo and stuff, but um, yeah, 1692 for this little uh, Scooby Doo uh, mystery machine van figures, and then there's a little monster there. I've never really had good good luck with these uh, mystery machines, you know, this Scooby Doo stuff. I've had a few of them, and they've always took so long to sell. I don't know why it is. Now, I couldn't tell you how much I picked this up for. I was probably picking these this sort of stuff up from the car boots. Probably only a few quid, not a, not a lot, you know, two or three quid for this lot here. But to be honest, I really don't know where I got these. Oh, I might have got them from a charity shop actually, maybe for uh, two or three quid. But yeah, six, sixteen ninety two on that plus postage. I don't know whether that's a good price or not because, as I say, this is a very very old listing. I'm guessing maybe I could have got a little bit more, but. At the same time, it just did not sell for so long, so that might be an indicator that maybe I couldn't have got much more. Maybe the market's getting a little bit saturated, I'm not sure. But I've just never really had uh, much luck with uh, with these mystery machines, as I, as I said. But, you know, 17 quid plus my post, it's still a, a nice price, you know, for what it is. Um, and it's always nice with these, uh, obviously, these kind of things, these uh, little... Uh, you know, kind of sets. You want to do a nice little layout and also, um, as well as that, make sure if you've got like um, figures that could go with, with it, then maybe even put in a few extra figures to kind of sweeten up the, the listing a little bit more. But I can't really comment on that because I say this took forever to sell. So, uh, you know, if you take my advice on this one, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. But yeah, that's that one anyway there. I'm glad it has uh, eventually sold anyway. Um, so this one is two times Mason's English Ironstones, uh, English Ironstone uh, ceramic soap dishes. Uh, 1799 plus postage on this. This was a little bit more of a recent, um, well, I say a recent buy. It's still probably six months or so old, but it's a little bit more recent than the other two. Uh, so, yeah, just these two little uh, soap dishes here. So, quite nice on those two. 1799 plus my postage, 20 quid all in. They're not very big. These are like 15 centimeters or something. Uh, 17 centimeters across there. Uh, well, actually in length. Um, but, yeah, so. Pretty happy on those two, you know, nothing major, but still, nice little sale there. Uh, next, ah, there we go, getting to some more Doc 2 figures, like I was mentioning. These have been selling, as I said, quite steadily this uh, this week, and, you know, for the last few weeks, really. Uh, Doc 2, Knife, Doc 2 era, Series 1 figures, uh, Captain Jack, Mox of Balhoom, the editor, etc. We've also got a, a Gelf zombie in there. Um, and yeah, you know, nice little bundle there. 9.95 plus my postage. You could probably sell... You maybe sell a couple of these figures on their own, like maybe the Captain Jack or maybe the Doctor, or maybe like, you know, do Captain Jack and the Doctor together and you might get, I don't know, you might get some money back for them, like a decent amount, like 6 99 plus postage or something, but I decided just to whack all of these in a bundle. Maybe next time looking at this, uh, this little bundle here, maybe I could have gone a little bit more, 12 99 something like that, because as I say, I have got the 9th Doctor figure in there and the Captain Jack which aren't necessarily really sought-after figures or anything, but they are a little bit better than just the standard monsters like the Gelf Zombie or the Editor and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, 9 95 plus my postage on that one. And then finally is this really nice... Uh, vintage Royal Crown Derby gilt decorative uh, side plate. Really, really nice, this one. Only a small side plate, though. Um, well, like 20 centimetres. Actually, it's 
uh, probably a little bit bigger than a side plate. Well, it's kind of a large side plate, basically. Um, but yeah, so 20 centimeters side plate on this one. I was hoping that this would be worth a little bit more money, but when I was researching on complete installs for a lot of this Crown Derby, I picked up a job lot of Crown Derby like last year sometime, probably beginning or mid last year something like that um, and I was researching a lot of these plates and stuff and they weren't actually worth as much as I thought like you can maybe get you know 10 to 15 pound a plate something like that and I was kind of thinking they'd be worth maybe 20 quid a plate something like that um, or I was kind of secretly hoping they would be worth 20 quid a plate um, but no I mean considering it is just a side plate um, for you know uh, 9.95 plus my postage on a little side plate like that I'm still happy with it um, obviously that job lot was a pretty good job lot that I picked up paid I think 25 pound plus commission or 30 pound plus commission and I got quite a lot of crown derby in it so pretty happy sold through quite a lot of it now um, I think there's another couple of pieces to go um, but yeah obviously I'm in profit on that job lot so pretty happy with that you know after all you know posting and fees and everything it's going to be profit anyway um, but it would have been nice to maybe get a little bit extra for this but you know it did take a while to go so I don't think I could have priced it much more than, than I did anyway but yeah that's that one there and uh, that about concludes the sales update so if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe if you haven't oh no if you enjoyed it don't forget to like that's what I meant to say if you haven't already then please do subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one guys so I will see you very soon